All right, everybody, welcome to the Sunday live stream. So first of all, you may notice that uh, I am in yet another new background. That is because uh, the old place that I'm staying at uh, again lost power, and that's the beauty of Puerto Rico. It's just a natural progression of what's actually happening, and here we are. So um, I don't really uh, have a, a full functioning audio piece, so hopefully uh, the audio sounds pretty good. If there's some uh, background noise, let me know, and I'll try to adjust because, again, <laughs> new place. And then also uh, the Wi-Fi sucks. So if I drop off, you know exactly what it is. If this... Yeah, so let's see if we can get through this. All right, so here's what we got today. And just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we're taking a look at who's dumping on us. And we can see that over the last uh, you know couple of weeks, couple of months, we've been either sideways or just uh, a reduction, especially in altcoins and more heavily in meme coins. So if we take a look at it, there was a couple of places that I like to look at for data about who's doing this and why they're doing it. And I think I understand who they are, I understand why they're doing it. I'm going to tell you why they're wrong moving forward. And then we're going to get into talk about uh, how uh, the Biden administration and President Joe Biden actually is going to be meeting with Bitcoin miners in the future in the next, next couple of weeks or so. So if you don't think this is a political issue, uh, you are sorely mistaken. So here's what we got. So this one was a pretty good piece from Unchained. It talks about Bitcoin miners are under pressure and selling coins. And when I see this, I'm like, well, that makes sense. Let's see what the data says. So Analytics from CryptoQuant know that Bitcoin miners are under pressure. Bitcoin miners under pressure have started selling their coins over the last few weeks. On June 9th, which is 16th, so you know, roughly seven days or so, about a week, these transfers hit a two-month peak of over 3,000 Bitcoin. And of course, that, that drops the price because of a major sell-off. Miner activity or Bitcoin miner over-the-counter desks have also seen a spike in activity, particularly on June 10th when miners sold 1,200 Bitcoin. Publicly traded Bitcoin miners such as Marathon have been seen offloading Bitcoin holdings, selling 1,400 Bitcoin in June compared to only 390 Bitcoin in May. So if we take a look at that little piece, you can kind of understand like where things are going and, and you know as far as like price depreciation and what's happening. But what I want to do is just kind of break this down. There's a great website that I steal from data all the time. It's a website in the cryptoverse. And uh, if you're interested in finding data like this, there's a link in the description, you can check it out. But what I wanna see is this is the miner flow to exchange. And we take a look at the outflow and we can break this down by daily, weekly, or monthly. It's better when you do, do it daily because if you do it weekly, it doesn't really show up too well, up to the most up-to-date types of things. And we're gonna see that as far as like yesterday, 15th of June, you had a pretty big outflow, around 1,700 Bitcoin. That's a quite a bit. And we can see the outflow, outflow, outflow. And it's been constant pressure. And then if we take a look at uh, inflow, we can see there's not a lot of, of uh, flow from the Bitcoin miners' wallets. Crypto to an exchange is not because I have nothing else to do. It's because I'm taking profits. So take that as you may. But we can see that uh, this is uh, down quite a bit as far as the inflow. And then if we take a look at the net, which of course is taking you know the outflow minus the inflow, we can see that uh, we are essentially in the negative and we are outflowing. We've been doing that quite for quite some time. But there's one piece that I want you to, to notice here. And we take a look at the inflow or excuse me, let me see here, inflow, thank you, I'm trying to get to the right, right piece. If we take a look at the inflow, what do you notice? This line right here, this white line is the Bitcoin price. And we see that there's major inflows, inflows, not outflows, inflows of Bitcoin going back to the miners. We can see a massive price appreciation it happened the 4th of April when the Bitcoin price was 68,000. And then in a couple of days, it went up to almost 72,000. That was pretty much the local top. 
And then we see it uh, again happen over here, actually right here, 18th of April, when Bitcoin price is 63. And we can see, let me zoom in. And all these charts that I'm using you are, well, not, not Ben's, of course, but you can take a look at look into Bitcoin and they'll show you a lot of great data, a lot of great data points. But as far as like the hash rate, we actually topped out on May 26, meaning that all these different Bitcoin miners are out there and they're all trying to coordinate and they're trying to solve these mathematical problems so they can actually uh, retain or actually get the rewards, which is Bitcoin. And there's only so much can go around. So as time goes on, they're like, hey, we're, Gonna have to capitulate a little bit rather to shut these off because we're not making any money because we're all, we're all doing the same thing we just went through the halving on april 20th 2024 so they're doing the same amount of work the same amount of electricity use the same amount of their uh, hardware that they're actually using and they're getting 50 percent of the rewards wouldn't that suck for you if you had to go to work and they're like hey bob you're doing a great job today good job uh, mopping up those floors but guess what uh you're gonna make 50 percent look into Bitcoin. The rewards are what the Bitcoin miners get paid for in Bitcoin, but the fees, the fees themselves, those are the transaction fees. And you can see that over time, they actually go up quite a lot. Why is that? Because the reason is, and very simple, it's ordinals. It's ordinals, which are essentially NFTs on the uh, Bitcoin blockchain. And because of that, the miners are doing pretty good. If it wasn't for this, I know people hate them, I think there will be an even bigger sell-off so if you want to look at it that way, or not a bad thing. And then also, if you want to take a look at, well, maybe there's some kind of correlation between the price we take a look at. There's another indicator you might want to look at. It's called the hash ribbons indicator. Again, links in the description for that. And what it, what it is, is uh, when miners give up, essentially they're capitulating. It's, it's possibly the most powerful Bitcoin buy sell ever. So this is how it's calculated. Bitcoin difficulty adjusted every two weeks. The hash rate is calculated on a daily basis. Ending. And then when it goes back up of the 60 and price increase, that means that you're, you actually are returning to a little bit normalcy. But if we can see right here that just on May 8th, May 9th, May 10th is when this crossed over and you got these heavy pink lines, which means essentially that miners are capitulating, they're shutting off. And we saw that also with the, uh, uh, with the, buh, 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 buh. where'd it go? The hash rate around here and it's kind of dropped off so if we know that's the case on may 9th or may 10th what what happened with the price at that time if we go back to may 9th or 10th this is where i thought i could i was like okay i'm going to nail this one because i think this is going to be a correlation but not really if you come over here to may may 9th price actually went up the bottom was actually may 1st or so when it was like 57,000 and May 9th or 10th, actually it's not too bad, 62,000. So maybe there is a little correlation for the hash ribbons. And of course, minor flow to exchanges. 
Now it makes sense of who's dumping on us, and that's fine. Miners are going to do that. That's just a, that's just a normal part of the process. It's been happening forever. But the question is, but who else is it? Who else is it? Well, there's also a problem with the ETFs. And ETFs were great. We got those approved in January 2024, and things were just going off like gangbusters. But over the last week or so, we've had some negative flows. Yesterday, the yesterday, which would be Friday, this was from uh, Saturday. Sorry, I couldn't do a video yesterday because of uh, power outage. Yesterday's ETF flow was negative for a fourth time this week, 189 million of outflows. And usually what it is is grayscale dumping. At some point, that's going to stop, but you got to go through the hard parts. And this is the hard times. And if it was easy, everybody would do it. But then you ask yourself, okay, the ETFs, the ETFs, but we've got a lot of positive flows, have we not? And just because we have four days, so who the hell is dumping on us? It's the OGs. That's who's dumping on you. It's not just the Bitcoin miners. It's the people who have been around a long time. Now, I'm not here... Sorry, at the, we keep going out. Uh, I'll try to fix that at some point. Wi-Fi is not the best here. But uh, when that actually happens, or the people that are, are dumping on you, it really comes down to this. It's just what I call, I'm not going to call it smart money because it's not smart money. It's just old money. And there was a post from uh, Willie Wu. And he says, hey, ETFs are buying, institutions are buying. Who's selling? It's OGs. He goes, let me tell you, the OGs have more, and these, when I say OGs, the, the original people that actually got into Bitcoin or have been holding for quite some time, for years, right? People like me, probably people like you, you're probably taking profits. They are selling. And these OGs have more Bitcoin than all the ETFs put together, 10 times more. And they sell into every bull market. The pattern is old as the Genesis block. And what he's showing here, and it was interesting because it says coin days destroyed. And this is from Glassnode. You can go to Glassnode and try to find this, but it's Glassnode's kind of pricey for the up-to-date information. Maybe they have it, I'm not for sure, but look at Bitcoin does, so check that out. And what coin days destroyed means, it's an indicator. And the CD... Trick gives an extra weighting to coins that have not moved for a long period of time, i.e. OGs, people who have bought a long time ago and they just let it sit there in their wallet. They haven't moved it. And then all of a sudden they do. And what do they move? I'm, I don't know about you, but again, just like we talked about with the uh, miners, I'm not just moving my, my Bitcoin and crypto around because I have nothing to do. I'm doing it because I'm selling. And this is probably the same thing here. So Bitcoin investors who have been in the market for long periods of time have accumulated Bitcoin are likely to have a greater understanding of Bitcoin's price cycle versus newer entrants into the market. Debatable, but okay. We can therefore consider them to be smarter money. Yeah, maybe. For this reason, or maybe they're just stubborn. For this reason, there is value in tracking large, large movements in coin days destroyed. What do you notice here? Wi-Fi porty, <laughs> Wi-Fi problems. The ones that are dumping on you are the OGs. And they did a pretty good job back here in, actually it was okay. In 2013, they timed the top pretty damn good. And then December 25, 2013, they did it pretty well, right? Because this is when the highest point they dump on you. They did a great job. They did a good job again. It was actually mixed because when they, the peak of their dumping in the last two cycles ago, in 2017, 
the first big round of dumping was August 2017, when the Bitcoin price was 4,160, which I got to tell you, if you were in Bitcoin at that time and you had bought Bitcoin for a dime or even a hundred bucks, wouldn't that be awesome for you? You'd be like, wow, this is maybe the time to sell. And a lot of them sold it because I'm just going to tell you right now, here in Puerto Rico, the old OGs know the other old OGs. There is no separation. They all hang together. They all know each other. It's like a cabal. I hate to break it to you, but that's what it is here in Puerto Rico. I'm not going to give any names. I'm just telling you. Waiting around, or heck, they could have, hopefully they, dollar cost average out, but I doubt it. But you can see that they missed it. They missed it again. So what I'm thinking is what's happening here is that the whales are like, because there was a pretty good outflow at 69,000, which was pretty good. And they're doing it again at 68,000. And now things are dropping off. So again, I think to myself, this is probably the whales or the old people who are OGs, who are dumping on it and they're going to they're going to miss it out again they're going to dump early which is fine and we're going to pick it up and then right into the next big bull run and there's a reason for that i say that it's not just because i hope it's going to happen i think it's going to happen there's a couple of reasons and it comes down to two presidential candidates Bitcoin. And we talked about how important it was for energy companies to actually partner up with these Bitcoin miners because they have an ability to use the excess electricity to make them profitable, which will then go into the communities because they can buddy up, they can be right there, they can shut everything down if they need to, and they can pop everything up and start to mine when there's ex excess energy just sitting around because they don't want to lose it. So this was like a win-win for everybody. And if it doesn't work out, like this has happened in uh, uh, in the winter for Texas and in the in the uh, torrential uh, heat wave. ERCOT, or the governing organization for, for Texas Electricity said, shut it down. You guys are doing too much. We need this for our, our users. No problem, boss. They shut it down and they get paid for it. Not as much as if they're up. And then when they, when they get back up, then they sell their Bitcoin. Everybody's happy. So... Texas figured it out. This is actually a pretty good thing. So ERCOT, Electricity Reliability Council, they want to integrate Bitcoin miners as controllable load resources. The CEO, Pablo Vegas, Pablo Vegas, emphasized that classifying more Bitcoin miners as CLRs would improve their reliability of the state's power grid. A CLR is a You. Sorry about the Wi-Fi. This will be the last uh, live stream we do for quite some time. We're just going to do recorded videos from now. So crypto operations in Texas consume around 2,600 megawatts, but only 500 megawatts are registered at CLRs. And they state, I would like to see all crypto become CLRs. That will be from a liability standpoint. Truly advantageous. Brian Morgenstrom from Riot said, yeah, this is a great thing. But... Don't get super excited because there's always going to be some naysayer out there. And that's L Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick expressed concerns over the projected increase in the Texas power grid's capacity. And he says, hey, miners will, are responsible for 50% of the added growth, which I think is good. We, we need to take a close look at those two industries. And, uh, and I believe he sh he's right. Actually, they should take a, a big look because it's a, a net positive for Texas. But that's just me. So talking about Texas and Bitcoin miners in America... Leads me to the last point, and, we, and we'll do a Q&A. 
Two big things. This is why I think that the OGs are, are missing the mark. They don't see the big picture. And the big picture is, I think this is going to be a major political issue moving into the presidential election in November here in the United States. is what they want to talk about is Bitcoin mining and, and how important it is for the United States. And why do they want to do that? Why does the Biden administration all of a sudden all hot to trot on Bitcoin miners? It's because his opponent, Donald Trump, said the exact same thing weeks ago. And he already met with them. Bitcoin miners at Donald Trump's closed door event says he thinks Bitcoin can help win the AI. He said two big things. He wants all future Bitcoin to be minted in the US and he said this could also help with AI. Coalition includes reps from Riot, Marathon, Terra Wolf, Clean Spark, Core Scientific, Akron, Shola Energy, and Exacore. So this is why these guys are bending the knee and coming to the table. And it goes back to the old saying, first they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And this, when I got in, was a laughing stock of the investment community. And they laughed at us. And that's just par for the course. And then, of course, they're fighting you. And we see that with a host of different politicians. And then, of course, you win, which will lead me to my last, last, last point, I swear to God. If or if you would like to donate, John Deaton is taking on Elizabeth Warren. Can we all agree that no one likes Elizabeth Warren? Can we just say that no one's like, that's not nobody's favorite politician? Okay, just wanna make sure. Because with her, she's beatable and John Deaton can do it. And I did this video, and actually there's a link in the description for two things. One, why he can win, and two, why you should donate to his campaign, which I have done a couple of times already. So if you do that, that'd be great, because I think he's, uh, and it's not just about crypto, we also go over his issues and where he stands. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video with all the drop-offs and the Wi-Fi, sorry about that, hit the thumbs up. Maybe you don't want to subscribe, but that's okay. I'll be around. Now, if you want to stick around, we'll do a little Q&A. I'll answer all your questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. But if you got to take off, take off. Also, happy Father's Day, as I forgot to say that. So all your fathers out there, congratulations. Best job in the world.